everybody. Ted Haggard here from the Storehouse Church, which is the house church ministry of St. James Church here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. It is a beautiful 18 degrees outside with a perfectly white snow covering. Trees are frosted white. I mean, you would think Disney put that together. But God decided to do it this morning in Colorado Springs, and we're loving it. Now, understand, two days ago, we were out in short sleeves, enjoying the day, hiking in the mountains, just having a great time. And two days from now, we'll be doing that again. And so that's the wonderful life in Colorado Springs. For those of you that don't know, Colorado Springs is on the front range. So we'll get snow or whatever, and then it's gone in a day. And so we get the benefit of it. So we can have a snow day and make cookies and play Risk and watch a movie or read a book. And then the next day, we're all back to normal. So it's awesome. Couldn't be more perfect. Okay, today we are in 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, and uh, here it describes some of the events prior to the Lord's coming. Now, all of my life, my adult life, I have had leaders telling us about how the coming of Jesus is imminent. And uh, it started when I was in high school with late great planet Earth. Now, I'm not saying everything in late great planet Earth was wrong. Uh, because uh, it said television would become more significant, and it has. But that's about all that's uh, correct in that book, and that's a lot of reading to get that point. But um, but it's gone on and on and on, and right now it is very, very popular. If you are foolish enough to follow people on YouTube and think that they're scholars because they sound like it, or... Uh, or uh, a neighborhood guy, uh, that's your calling. I encourage all of you to uh, get your information from legitimate churches that have a chain of command and have a board and have a theological system to keep things biblical. And I'll give you an example of that. There, Here in the Bible, it says two things about the second coming. One thing, it says the whole world will know. And so right now, two-thirds of the world knows that Jesus is the Son of God, and the Bible is the Word of God. They've at least been exposed to it in their own ethnicity and their own language, two-thirds of the world. One-third of the world has never heard. And so they're either in unreached people groups or or whatever. Now, I know, I know some of the broadcasters will say, well, since we broadcast a beam over such and such an area, it's been reached. no. We consider reached, missiologists differ on this, but we consider our, uh, an area reached if there is a church in its own ethnicity and its own language. That's called an ethno-linguistic group, and uh, people group that way. And uh, when Jesus comes back, that will be one of the criteria. Another of the criteria will be a great falling away worldwide. But right now, the body of Christ is growing. It's not growing in Europe, and it is no longer growing in the United States, but it is growing in Asia, South America, Central America, um, uh, Southeast Asia. There are places in the world where the church is exploding. There is not a great falling away, although I think we are on the precipice of a great falling away in the United States, primarily because of our universities. And so um, so here the Bible talks about that. Now, I'll highlight this a little bit for you. And I'm teaching out of the New Living Translation here. It says, now, dear brothers and sisters, let us clarify some of the things about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and how we will be gathered to meet him. Don't be so easily shaken or alarmed by those who say that the day of the Lord has already begun. And so, and of course, you can you can go all over and hear people say the day of the Lord is here, or the day of the Lord has begun, or or the second coming of Christ has already happened. I was talking with a guy the other day who believed that all of it's already happened and that type of thing. And of course, that's foolishness. 
Don't believe them here, the Apostle Paul wrote 2,000 years ago, and it applies just as much today. You would be amazed how disappointed people are when I'm speaking to groups of people and I say, uh, those who are teaching eschatology that believe that the second of second coming of the Lord is imminent, that is a deduction. There are absolutes in the scripture that where it says clearly, those are uh, always true. Then we have interpretations. We try to get our interpretations as true as possible, but they have a greater likelihood of being wrong, obviously, than an absolute. Then we have deductions. Deductions is where we take a verse out of one place and put it together with a verse in another place and come to a conclusion. So it's a biblical conclusion. You may get something from Daniel and something from Revelation and something from 1 Thessalonians and put it together and conclude that Christ is coming tomorrow afternoon. Well, that's a deduction that has a greater likelihood of being wrong. Not all of them are. But some deductions have a deductions generally have a greater likelihood of being wrong than an inter interpretation that has a greater likelihood of being wrong than an absolute because absolutes are never wrong. The absolutes of Scripture, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, is an absolute. The Bible is the Word of God, is an absolute. Jesus Christ died on the cross to redeem you from the penalty of your sins. That's an absolute. They're perfectly clear in Scriptures. So here he's saying about all the people that have been uh, that are teaching eschatology and that the Lord is coming, his Lord's coming is imminent. He says, don't believe in even if they claim to have a spiritual vision or a revelation or a letter supposedly from us. And we would equate that to insightful biblical understanding. And by the way, you can always spot these guys because they start changing, changing the meanings of words. And as soon as they start changing the meanings of words, where words don't mean words, then it's hard for the word of God to mean what the Lord intended it to say to you. And so uh, be careful when people change the meaning of words. Here it says, don't be fooled by what they say. Now, let me just tell you right off the bat, every human being on the face of the earth is a liar. The way you can believe what you believe, and or the way you can know what you believe, and the way you can know what other people believe is by what people do, not by what people say, because we all are advocates. An advocate will emphasize what they want to emphasize and de-emphasize the things that they don't want to emphasize. Okay, so don't be fooled by what they say. And this is talking specifically about people who teach the study of the end times and the imminent coming of the Lord Jesus. For that day will come, for that day will not come until there is great rebellion against God and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the one who will bring dis destruction. So that day will not come until a great rebellion against God happens. Now we're seeing that. In much of the world right now, all right? And so there are Christian, all, all religions are not the same. Christianity, according to the Bible, is the truth. It is the way. It is the uh, guarantee. Other religions are a deception, all right? They may have an element of truth, but they are not the truth. Okay, so there'll be a great rebellion against God, and we're seeing that now on American university campuses. We're seeing it in the Middle East. We're seeing it growing in Europe. And so, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the one who brings discussion, destruction. As far as we know, that man is not on the scene. He will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God. God and every object of worship. We do not have that on the scene right now. He will even sit in the temple of God, claiming that he himself is God. We do not have that happening right now. So don't you remember what I told you about all this when I was with you? And you know what is holding him back, for he can be revealed only when his time comes. What's holding us back is the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the prayer of the saints. All right. So people that do not respond to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and do not respond to the prayer of the saints, they are deceived. OK, that's why we have uh, people 
denying evidence, denying truth, both biblical truth and scientific tr truth, and historic truth, and believing a lie. Here it says, for this lawlessness is already at work secretly, and it will remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. And when the Holy Spirit does that, or as the Holy Spirit does it, we will all be very aware of it. Then the man of lawlessness will be revealed, but the Lord Jesus will slay him with the breath of his mouth and destroy him by the splendor of his coming. This man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power and signs and miracles. He will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction. Now, let me talk to you right now about America and where we are in the world. <clears throat> if the 20th century taught us anything, it taught us that a freely elected government that is for the service of the people, that's military and every uh, uh, use of power, courts, police, et cetera, are all submitted to an elected official with laws that rule over everybody as equally as possible. All right. If the 21st century taught us anything with a free market system so people can be innovative and creative and competition, both with political ideas, that's why we have a free press, political ideas, and with products and services. That combination is what's made America and Western civilization the greatest uh, civilization of freedom and liberty that has ever been on the face of the earth. You can always tell a good government by the direction of immigration. I haven't noticed loads of people trying to get into the Middle Eastern Islamic countries. I haven't noticed huge numbers of people trying to get out of America and risking their life the way they did to get out of East Germany into West Germany, where there was uh, the government I just described. All right. And so so I might have said that backwards. They, they were desperately trying to get out of East Germany and no one was trying to get into West Germany. All right. So those are the lessons of the 20th century. But many of our historians in our universities totally missed that lesson. And now they're believing Marxism, which caused more human suffering than Marxism, Leninism, communism, socialism, caused uh, countries to uh, people to suffer, people to die under the hand of, of horrible states. One party rule, which Hitler had, so he could use the power of the state to eliminate the Jews and others, the homosexuals and the people he didn't like, or what's going on in Iran right now, a one party state. It's a theocracy where if women go outside without their hair covered, they're killed or imprisoned. All right. If women go out without a male escort, they're killed or imprisoned. All right. If they wear makeup or try to get an education, they are killed or imprisoned. Same with the Taliban in Afghanistan now. And for some reason, our well-educated, all knowledgeable college students right now are protesting, wanting that type of government in more places. Palestinians have more freedom in Israel than they do in those countries I just mentioned, under Hamas or under Hezbollah or under the Taliban. And so last night I saw a girl with bright red lipstick, hair beautifully done, beautiful makeup, talking about the liberation of Israel and how they, it needed to be undone. She was about as ignorant as they come, because if she walked through a Taliban controlled area or an area that she thinks she would call liberated, she would be stoned. All right. So when people advocate for a one party system and right now, one of our political parties is advocating for a one party system and people that advocate for it always accuse the opposing party of the being the enemy of democracy. How do you know what the enemy of democracy is? You, If you raise taxes, you're you want more government power. If you lower taxes, you want less government power. 
If you use executive mandates, you want more government power. If you work through the elected representatives, the Congress, the Senate, and the Supreme Court, and the states, then you want less central government power. So we've got a major party right now that wants one government power. We know exactly how that works with China and with Russia. And they would love to eliminate the other party, the opposing party. And so all these lessons were in the 20th century. And so and certainly it's always more efficient when we say, oh, let's have a uniform government system so that everything is more efficient. Oh, it appears more efficient, but it's not. There's got to be competition. Gail and I went hiking the other day down at uh, the new state park that they've just built down around um uh, NORAD and down around that mountain. And when you go into it, it's beautiful. It's all a relatively new park it's right by there, right by Fort Carson. And there's all kinds of wonderful stuff. And there's a beautiful brand new parking lot. And then there's two spaces with uh, electronic electric car charging stations built there. So I went inside and I asked the lady who works there, how often is that used? And she, she laughs. She said, it's never been used. So it's a typical example of a government project that what should be there, but there are, there's no market demand yet. Now, there may be one day, but every time there's government control, there is either a surplus or a lack. So, But if free markets control supply and demand, and work with that. Then you go into your grocery store and there's the right number of apples there and the right number of boxes of Cheerios and the right number of Wheaties and those things. That is all determined by supply and demand, by the market working with those things. And when the government gets involved, we end up with pot, we end up dumping milk into the ocean. We end up with piles of corn in the Midwest and we try to figure out what in the world we're going to do with it because our central government told people what they really needed to do. It's so funny. It's like uh, the vice president, she sent out a, a greeting on Thanksgiving Day, and she's been highly involved in in uh, trying to get rid of um, gas stoves. And there in the picture, she and her husband was their gas stove. Yeah. And so anyway, don't believe what people say. Always believe what people do. And here there's evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. So God will cause them to be greatly deceived. So there will be deception. And the only way you'll avoid it is by the word of God and the local church. If you avoid <coughs> them, you will be deceived. Then they will be condemned for enjoying evil rather than believing the truth. Okay, well, that's enough to think about for today. And it's a beautiful, beautiful day. Let's enjoy it. So the Lord Jesus bless you all. And if you're interested in going to our website for our little, our little gathering in our home now under the leadership of St. James Church, it's www thestorehouse.homes. Okay, God bless you all. Have a great day. Bye-bye.